Alrighty. Let's get this review going. Ew. Ew. Not happening. There we go. Hello everybody, Sigrip2, and welcome back to my channel. In honor of the Flaming Lips releasing their first album in four years, Oxymelody. I plan on going through the band's entire discography and giving my honest reviews on them. Be warned, there's gonna be some jump cuts going on. But yes, the band's entire discography. I'm gonna go through from the beginning up until and including Oxymelody. I don't intend on reviewing the EPs, they have a lot of them, and that's, you know, you know, I kind of want to get these completed within a reasonable time frame, so maybe I might do them all together in one video at some point, who knows, let's just get right into the review. So the band's first album, released in 1986, is called Here It Is. I don't have a copy of it myself, but... On the compilation, finally the punk rockers are taking acid. It includes the band's first three albums and their first EP. So, first thing you need to know before diving into this album is how radically different it is compared to the band's newer material. Don't go into this one expecting to hear some Do You Realize or Fight Test or Ego Tripping at the Gates of Hell or anything from Embryonic, The Terror. Get all that out of your head right now. This is an entirely different beast altogether. The best way to describe this album is noise rock, heavily influenced from bands like Sonic Youth. But I've also seen people describe this as post-punk, which is a term I normally associate from early albums from The Cure, but neither here nor there. In fact, if you're familiar with the band's later material, you could almost make the argument that this is an entirely different band, if you didn't know any better. And I mean, you can make the argument that it technically is, considering how Wayne and Michael are the only two members of the band that have been through since the beginning, but I'm not gonna get into that. However, that's not to say that this is an entirely different animal. There are some sounds reminiscent of things from later albums, especially in tracks like Jesus Shootin' Heroin. It's also good to know that Wayne's song titling was always top-notch. But overall, it's a very gritty and noisy album, hence the term noise rock. It's not quite as pop-leaning as the later albums, although there are times when the pop does shine through, like on the track Trains, Brains, and Rain, which is probably the closest thing to something you'd find on transmissions from the satellite heart, if we're being lenient. Another thing to note about this album is Wayne's lower vocal register. First things first, I would like to mention, almost forgot to say in the beginning, that this is the first release from the band that had Wayne Coyne doing vocals. Yes, he was not the original vocalist. His brother Mark was, who unfortunately left after the recording of their first EP when he got married. I say unfortunately because I think he was a competent vocalist, not because he got married. You know, kudos to you. Hope you're doing well. But yeah, the main thing about this album is Wayne's vocal performance. He doesn't use a falsetto or a higher register for these earlier albums. No, he uses a more natural register. And to be perfectly honest, I wish it was a sound he'd go back to more often. Another thing of note is how often Wayne likes to scream on the earlier albums, which is another thing I'd wish Wayne would do more often. But let's talk about the album as it is. The album opens and ends with a track called With You, which is mostly an acoustic-led jam but there's two big freakout sections in this track, and honestly, this flippin' dichotomy between the calm and the subtle and the loud, bombastic freakout craziness, it, it's honestly a really great way to sum up the band's earlier material. The lyrics on this song, and for the album in general, they're pretty simple, but they are effective. A lot better than the weird meandering that Wayne seems to like to do now. I mean, don't get me wrong, the lyrics on this album are still weird, but... White trash, rednecks, earthworms eat the ground Legalize it, every drug right now Yeah. Tracks, just like before and Unplugged, are energetic rompers, and Unplugged also seems like it was influenced by surf rock. I don't know if that's something anyone else really picks up on, but that's something I definitely pick up on. The only tracks on this album I'm not fond of are Charlie Manson Blues and She Is Death. Both kind of don't really go anywhere, and they don't really do anything, and they seem like filler on an album that's 
barely more than 40 minutes and only has 10 tracks. Why would you need filler for that? What? No. No. However, that's not an argument that I can make about the 7 minute long Jesus shooting heroin, which honestly wastes no time and it's seven minutes. That track alone is worth listening to. The heavy freakout sections are probably my favorite moments on this entire album. It's a bad trip if I've ever seen one. I don't advocate drugs, because drugs are bad and stuff. The version of the album on Punk Rockers also includes some bonus tracks, but I'm not going to cover them in this video. They, they weren't on the original release. I'm not too bothered about them. I'll probably do the bonus tracks from this album in a separate video if anybody is interested. Alright, so now I'm going to get into a very quick ranking of the tracks on this album, and afterwards I'm going to give my total rating. I'm not going to give any quick comments about this, I'm just going to go through the tracks starting now. Oh, I miss In the mist tier we have She Is Death, followed by Charlie Manson Blues. Okay. <laughs> and in the OK tier we have Just Like Before, followed by Godzilla Flick. Hooray! In the great tier, we have Unplugged, Man from Pakistan, and Staring at Sound slash With You Reprise. Wonderful! And last but certainly not least, we got the wonderful tier, which has With You, Jesus Shooting Heroin, and Trains, Brains, and Rain. And overall, this album gets a 3.5 out of 5. It's a very underrated album, but it's understandably so. It's not an album I recommend if you're trying to get into the band. This is not an album for everyone, and it's not an album for most Flaming Lips fans. So I'd understand it if you didn't want to listen to this album, but just know that you're missing out on some great tune. That was my review of Here It Is. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the album. Let me know what you think of the Flaming Lips. I will see you all when I review the band's second album. Oh my god! Not my best Joey Styles impression. I apologize. So with that said, hope you all have a great day and don't be a stranger.